everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor Nala Gurney, I am here with two different homemade sock blanks. A wider one that I made on my loops and threads, hand crank knitting machine, and a skinnier one that is about twice as long as this one that I made with my little Singer knitting machine. And we are going to dye both of these blanks using some Easter egg dye tablets. Today the Easter egg dye tablets are going to come from these Dudley kits that I got at Dollar Tree about a year ago. But given that Easter has just passed, now's the time to run out to your local supermarkets or Targets or Party City to see if they have any of these kits at 50 or 75% off because these dye tablets are so much fun to use in projects. The Dudley tablets contain sodium bicarbonate, which makes them overall basic, but, but these ones do have some citric acid in them in addition to the food coloring. I am still planning to add a lot of vinegar to our dye bath. I haven't exactly used this particular kit before, but, and I'm sure that there technically could be a pigmentation difference between different brands but ultimately I think that we'll end up with something probably similar results here that we do when we use any other uh, kit. And just so you guys don't worry about waste, when I open up and break down a bunch of kits just to get the dye tablets, I then will free cycle all the stickers and other components of the kits um, to other families in the area uh, so that way they don't get wasted because ultimately you could just get a bottle of food coloring to use as the egg dye. I seriously debated whether or not I wanted to use six tablets or 12 per 100 gram blank. I made these blanks out of Knit Picks Swish Worsted Weight Yarn, which is 100% superwash merino. In the end, I decided to go with 12 because I really wanted to try to get a nice punch of color with these blanks. In case you haven't guessed it already, the technique that we're gonna to do today is one of our new favorites. We're gonna place these tablets on these round blanks that were knit in the round, and then we're gonna roll them up with the tablets inside, and then place them in a dye pot, and sort of see how the colors spread and what kind of cool rainbow effects, or not, we might get. By doing this technique on two different blanks that have a different diameter and length, we'll have a blank that is sort of cuffed into the donut a bit looser and one that's a little bit tighter. And so I expect that we will get different results from both of them. I have laid out the tablets in approximately the order I want them on the blanks, starting with the end that came off of the knitting machine last, so it's the loose end. I've got the pink, then orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. I feel like the colors are approximately placed in similar locations on the skeins, um, but you can see there's a lot more distance here um, and there'll probably be a few more wraps in between colors um, with the thinner, um, the more narrow blank than with the wider blank. Um, and I might try to sort of space things so like these ones might be like here and here and these ones might be here and on the other side. We'll see how much control I have over that as I'm rolling them up, but at least this is the intent <laughs> of how I want to do this. I am leaving a bit of fabric after the last one because I do want um, the purple to be sort of within, if not multiple layers of the fabric, at least like, you know, fir firly, firmly held within the yarn. Sometimes when you look at the dye tablets, it can be a little hard to tell which color is which. And um, to do that, I just used like a little damp paper towel, and you can do just like a quick little swatch test on it. Um, which, you know, without things dissolving, and that sort of can help with the order. Unlike some other purple tablets, you can see like a mixture of like blue and pink in there. So we'll see how this comes out. 
Now what happens if the colors all spread out too much and they all run together? In my experience with Easter egg dye tablets, the average color of all the pellets seems to be sort of a green shade. Um, and I'll put a link to a video and it was like sort of a nice deep green. So I think that if the colors blend together too much, um, I don't think it's going to be like a horrible disaster. But I do hope that no matter what happens, Nala loves this yarn. Let's start rolling this and I'm going to start with these ones in sort of this position and I'm going to put this other pink one in right there. Let's roll it. Oh dear. The tablet sort of fell out. This is why this is all going to be sort of approximate. Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to have to figure out the best way uh, the best way to do this. So let's just cuff it a bit wider not go quite as tough as first and put our pink tablets in and then flip it again. Okay. So where are those tablets? All right. And now I'm going to flip it again and place these orange ones here towards this bottom. I'm going to flip it again. Um, no idea if that is enough. I'm going to place these yellows in. <laughs> Flip it again. These might end up being a little too close. Okay, put the greens in. Flip it again. Might be a little too close, but I am sort of excited to have these towards the interior. Okay, so that's our blues. And let's do the purple. Okay, so those purples just went in and All right, we've got our loose ball. <laughs> I'm now going to go for a similar sort of technique with our the one that will be tighter. I'm going to start by making a pocket, placing the pinks in, but this time do one two. Mm. Again, this might not be, I might not be putting them close enough, but eh, let's do three. I'm going to do three wraps in between each color this time. So I put those in one, two, three, and trying to keep the position of them approximately sort of alternating, and then one. Two, three, oh, where did the blues go? Okay. And which I could definitely mess up at this point. Um, I go one, two, it's getting a bit harder. Three, I'm going to put the two blues in. One, and you can see, see it there. It's a one, two, three. I feel like this one ended up a bit more balanced. Stick the purples in. Okay, so as we do this, I expect we are going to see um, the colors. Uh, the colors will probably come out of the blank. I don't know if the yarn is going to catch all of it. We might see some dye coming out in the solution. But I think that that's okay. At least I'm okay with it. So let's go like that. And all right, we've got some dye in the center. This one looks a bit apple-y. see if I can shift that. And actually, 
you can sort of shift this one as well so it's more like just in the interior but there we have our encased links I am really excited to see what happens now when we did this before you know we saw a huge difference in the resist of the tight versus loose and this time with the die starting on the inside I mean we could see a similar thing we could see smaller patches of the bright color in the tighter one than the looser one I'm not really sure but I am really excited to go and find out Easter egg dye tablets are food safe they're made with food coloring but I will be using um, dedicated dye equipment because I'm using my dedicated dye steam pan. I just started warming up this dye bath with 20 cups of water and two cups of white vinegar. I use a lot higher concentration of acid with these projects because of the these tablets will raise the pH and then make it harder for the colors to bind and so we want to start with something really really acidic. Um, but once this heats up, then we will add our dry little donuts. Our pan is looking hot and steamy. So now we are going to add Nala's yarn to the dye bath. And sort of let it go in. Oh, I'm seeing some color. See that blue sort of come out? So, up, oh, I'm seeing some blues come out from the other one. Um, I do want to add some more water to this, I think. Um, it will change sort of the heat, but oh man, so much water coming out. Um, <laughs> there's so much color coming out. Uh, there's a lot more coming out from the looser wound one than the tighter, which actually the tighter one will start absorbing some of that color. Okay, so here, ooh, I see a pink and some yellow. That's another one. Two. Three, that's another 12 cups of water. And I will add a bit more vinegar. Come on, get, get wet. I'm now pushing them in. Oh, I'm seeing all the colors come out over there. Okay, I'm going to stop touching them. I want to add another cup of white vinegar into the pan, sort of all around. And I'm seriously debating, yeah, let's do four more cups of water. The heat right now, yeah, it's on medium medium heat right now we're not near a simmer anymore but right now we've got it so that they can float a little bit they have space to move around and yeah we're gonna let this go and see what happens i'm sort of liking the placement of the different colors i see around here around the loose one i think it means i did a good job sort of placing them but if i move it you can see that there's a lot of colors bleeding out of that one and there's a lot less bleeding out of the one that is more tightly wound and I think that there's just a lot more yarn in between the dye and so the water isn't penetrating quite as far or as fast yeah you can see the little like streaks coming from that purple um, but I am excited to sort of see where these go and where we end up and so now I'm gonna let this go for, um, I think I'll come back in 15 minutes. There's a lot more to see on this loosely wound blank because we see a lot more of the colors peeking all the way through. On the tighter wound blank, I mostly see some blue and green with a little hint of orange down there. I know I said I was gonna be back in 15 minutes, but it's been about a 12 and I sort of wanna show what is happening here. Uh, clearly a lot of dye has come out and it might look like it's a little bit brown in the pan but really it is green um, and it's that green I told you is sort of the average of everything um, so you know we'll see where this ends up and where it continues to go um, 
I think that maybe if I'd started with a smaller volume of water or and hmm hmm hold on I'll be right back there is a skein of dry knit picks Hawthorne yarn and I am just going to pop this in um, I think that the green that's sort of coming around is a very very beautiful one um, but yeah I think that having something else in there that might help soak up some of the color could be useful and you know you'll notice that this isn't just immediately soaking everything up um, which if this were um, definitely more acidic it would uh, so that's just something to sort of think about as all this stuff is happening but probably should have had a zip tie on there um, but I'm gonna let this go for 20 minutes and we'll see where we are then but as those 20 minutes are getting started I am going to add some more vinegar, a whole other cup, to our situation to make sure that things are acidic enough. It has been 20 minutes and you can see there's still a little bit of blue coming out in that bottom corner. We've got a really nice sort of medium mossy green here on our hawthorn and the outsides of our cakes both also have some of that oh I pushed that and oh no that's seeing some of that color in there um, so moving this one I'm not seeing a lot of color come out mm, maybe not but that doesn't mean if I weren't to push that we wouldn't see some color and there is still some color in that dye bath so I'm gonna go ahead and give this I think an hour and then we'll come back and check on it it has been an hour and the the water looks like maybe there's a hint of green but it's looking rather clear grab a spoon I mean that's pretty clear I wonder if I move this if we'll see any color come out and right now not really over that hour I did see like some color coming out at some points but yeah, so now I'm gonna turn off the heat on both burners, we're on my gas stove top, and I'm gonna let this cool off for a while in the pot. And that's really just in case there are some pellets that have not completely dissolved. I want to give it a chance uh, to dissolve and then still have that heat to bind to our blanks. Um, but once this has cooled off, we will remove things and yeah unravel the blanks and see what they look like all right this has cooled off for a while I would say that this is it's not quite room temperature yet but semi-solid it's beautiful let's take a look Ooh, so we've got like a saturated rainbow and when I squeeze it I'm not seeing any other colors come out I am really curious to see how this will unwrap. So that was the tightly wound one. And the loose one also has this like sort of saturated rainbow. There is a little bit of brown, but I do see purple, green, a little bit of some yellow hints. Um, I'm excited to unravel both. The water is clear. Um, all of the dye is in the yarn. And I'm not sure if we should credit the sort of mop here for probably letting some of the other colors shine through. But I'm gonna let this cool completely and then we will unravel it, or not unravel, but we'll unwrap these donuts to see what the yarn looks like. Alrighty, let's unroll this loose one first. Um, look at that swirl of color. Oh my gosh. Ooh, and of course it is a bit stretched out but wow look at that what's cool is that we're gonna have this variegated yarn look at these streaks of color um, and so like the reds disappear and then 
looks like we've got some purple all the way through pretty much all the way through the package because um, I guess it's spread more but that is really kind of fun and then this side is just a lot more of that green but this is going to be a beautiful variegated yarn there's definitely a gradient to it um, but it's going to be a more subtle one that I'm really excited to see how it unravels. All right, let's take a look at the more tightly wound one. Whoa, see that color intensity? Um, wow. And here looks like, ooh, ooh, I see some white. That's cool. Okay, this time it looks like we're seeing more clear sort of striping almost um, with the tighter one. So there's more white, there are patches of bold color and patches of more pastel. And then when we get to the center, check out that yellow. Well, oh, this is cool. There's definitely a lot more, I think of the individual pure colors in the tighter one than there are in the looser one where things feel like they got a bit more blended and as i said you know this green that we're seeing especially on the looser one and on our bonus hank is sort of the average and the mixture of all these tones i think the thing that one of the things that intrigues me the most about this set is that the uh, the purple feels a little less intense from this particular kit than maybe I've seen in some other cases. But I think that's okay. I mean, I love, look at the pops of that, like that red, yellow, blue, green. Um, that's just so pretty, the way that that ended up. And I am really, really excited to unravel these. And I think that they could work great in one project or in multiple. So let's go wash some yarn. Okay, I've got both blanks, and I'm curious to see if there's going to be any color bleeding in here, because our dye bath was definitely clear, but that actually looks pretty good. Um, sometimes there can be some color towards the interior that's trapped, and the reason why these projects in general take a bit longer is that there's just that much more color. Um, or actually, sorry, it means that it's not that there's that much more color. It's that there's that it takes that much more time for the tablets to dissolve. Um, but I think that adding, I forget how many cups of vinegar we had in there in the end, but that definitely helps um, us allow things to bind. And yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and oh, rinse this until the water runs clear, which is already running clear, so it's mainly just rinsing out the soap. And then I'm going to go ahead and wash our bonus stain off camera, and then we'll come back once everything is dry. But Nala, ooh, I think these yarns are going to be so much fun to play with. Here are the dry blanks, and I'm not sure if this is what anyone expected, but this is so, so cool. Just by pure luck because I must have just had the, the little pellets in slightly different spots, we ended up with these really cool streaks of color from when they dissolved. While I was hand washing it, some of it unraveled a little bit, but you can already get a sense that we're gonna see like speckly, broken, resist from the fact that we were in a blank, which looks amazing. The top one, it's a little hard to get a sense of how the blank will be right now, but we definitely have more color, I guess, towards the outside of the blank than we do on the inside. On this inside, we definitely have more of the pure white. Whereas I think on the more loosely wound blank, we have some of that green all the way through. Now I am going to go and unravel these blanks onto my PVC pipe Nitty Naughty so we can take a look at the two different gradients that we created. I think on the tighter wound blank it's easier to sort of picture the overall sort of gradient that there is because there's more white and less, 
but even on the the looser wound blank on the bottom you can see there's a lot deeper green at the top than the bottom and less of the rainbow colors towards the top so I'll be back when they're unraveled Nala I'm not sure if this is what you expected when I started this video but these yarns are gonna be awesome here are both of the sock blanks unraveled and we have here the looser blank and the tighter blank in back in both of them you can see sort of a dark to light a dark to light gradient but this gradient feel is more extreme in the tighter wound blank which you could really see once we unraveled it because you could see that there were these sort of patches of more color and less color and so we see more of that striping like effect over here um, than we do on the looser wound blank and there's still a gradient there's a lot more of rainbow and you get more and more dark green um, I think both of these could turn into something awesome whether you combine the yarns into one project or use them in two separate projects just wanted to zoom in on the looser wound blank and the tighter wound blank in both of the circumstances you can see a lot of speckling from the resist of the blank itself and the fact that we started with a really high vinegar concentration if we had started with less vinegar we might have seen some of these rainbow colors spread out a bit more but i think also this overall green that we see would also sort of overpower some of these other tones more where you know we definitely have distinct purple pink orange yellow blue shining through on both of the blanks in addition to these blanks i did toss a yarn mop into the pot when it seemed like a lot of green was coming out and colors were mixing i wanted to soak up some of this outside green so that way we could preserve some of the rainbow colors that were on the inside um, and this green is beautiful there are almost a few hints of some red in here let me see it like overall this is a very beautiful tonal sort of medium green but in a few spots it's almost glazed with red a bit um, which I think makes the color a little less bright and very beautiful the yarn is definitely crimped so once I'm done filming I'm gonna go soak it in some water to help this relax Nala Gurney thank you so so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly this was so so much fun to film and I think that the final yarns are absolutely beautiful I love these pops of rainbow splotches and speckles on a green and white base and hopefully maybe you'll share what you turn it into if you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly you can find the link in the comments video description and iCard through the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store Sponsors get to pick the yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid, and then I design an experiment with you in mind to create both a fun video, but also to give you some really awesome yarn that is dyed just by me for you. If sponsorship might not be your thing, because um, you don't really want shout outs, uh, check out the rest of the shop. There are over a hundred skeins of hand dyed yarn featured in past and upcoming videos. And yeah, and you can even see some sneak peeks sometimes because frequently yarn will be in the shop before the video has come out. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so, so much for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I am definitely not done playing with these yarn donuts. I have another video that is already in the works, but yeah, let me know what else you think I might try with this technique. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.